In this session, we'll look at how we can calculate average end area cut and fill volumes. On my screen, I've got a drawing that represents a proposed roadway project. Let's take a quick tour. Right here, I've got an existing ground surface called EG. Here we can see the roadway center line. This is called Route 72 prop. This center line was used to define a roadway corridor called Route 72. If I select that corridor and come up and choose corridor surfaces, you can see that I've defined a datum surface for that corridor. Let me close this. I'll press escape to deselect. Let's zoom out and we'll pan over. As you can see, I have generated some cross sections for this roadway design. Right here, we can see the corridor itself. This yellow line represents my datum surface. Notice how it wraps around underneath the corridor model. The goal in this session is to calculate the cut and fill volumes between the datum surface and the existing ground surface. To do that, I'm going to pan back over to the roadway model and I'll select one of the sample lines. I will then come up to the launch pad panel and I'll choose compute materials. I'd like to compute the materials for my Route 72 alignment using the Route 72 sample line group. I'll click OK. And then in the Compute Materials dialog box, I can select a quantity takeoff criteria. Notice I already have one set up called Earthwork. This makes things really easy. All I have to do is select my existing ground and my datum surface, and my volumes are calculated. Now, just for a second, let's say that you don't have one of these set up ahead of time. Let me show you how you can create your own quantity takeoff criteria. I'll do that by closing this dialog box. Let me press Escape. And then we'll take a quick field trip to the Settings tab on the tool space. Let's drag this down. From here, I'll click to expand quantity takeoff. I will then expand quantity takeoff criteria. Here you can see that earthwork criteria we just looked at. To create a new quantity takeoff criteria, I'm going to right click on the heading and I'll choose new. I will then give my quantity takeoff criteria a name. I'm going to call this earthwork calcs and then I'll select the material list tab. Here's where I define the materials that I'd like to calculate. I'm going to click add new material. I'm going to call this material cut and I'll press enter. The cut material will have a cut quantity type. If I expand this out, you can see there are some other options. Notice we have a cut factor and a refill factor. I can use these to compensate for expansion or compaction of material. I'm going to keep the defaults for right now. The cut material is going to represent a comparison between two surfaces. As you can see, my data type is set to surface. Let me open the menu here. I'll select my existing ground surface and I will add that. I will then select the datum surface. I'll add that as well. Cut is going to be everything below the existing ground and above the datum surface. Finally, I'll come down to Shape Style. I'll select this. Here's where I can select the style that controls how the cut material is going to look in my cross sections. Let's open the menu. In this case, I've already defined a style called Section Cut, and I'll click OK. Now, to simplify things a little bit, I'm going to click the dash to fold up this material, and we'll create another material. I'm going to call this one Fill. I'll press Enter. The quantity type will be fill. Fill is also a comparison between two surfaces. Let me click to add the datum surface and then I'll add the existing ground surface. Fill is going to be everything above the existing ground and below the datum surface. Let's go to shape style and I'd like to use my fill shape style in the cross sections. I'll click OK. At this point my quantity takeoff criteria is finished. I'll come down and click OK. To compute the materials, I'm going to select a sample line. I'll come back to Compute Materials. We'll compute them using our alignment and sample line group. In the Compute Materials dialog box, I'm going to open this up and I'll choose the new quantity takeoff criteria that we just made. As you can see, very easy. All I have to do is select my existing ground surface in the cut and fill situation. I'm going to click here to set them both. I can do the same thing for the datum. Note that it's going to calculate the volumes using average end area. If I open the menu, you can see there are some additional options. Average end area is perfect for our needs. When I'm finished, I'll come down and click OK. And that's it. The materials have been calculated. They're being stored under a material list. To see the material list, a really quick way is to come back to Compute Materials, and I'll click OK. In the dialog box, we can see the list right here. I'm going to click to give this a more logical name. I'm just going to call this Earthwork Cut and Fill, and I'll press Enter. If I expand this out, you can see this is really just the criteria that we defined earlier. Let's click OK. To see the cut and fill volumes in a tabular form, I can come up to the launch pad and choose Generate Volume Report. We'll create the report based on our alignment and sample line group using our new material list. Let me click the Open button and I'll select my desired report. I'll choose Earthwork. This is an out-of-the-box report. I'll come down and click Open. I will then choose OK. I'll click Yes to allow the scripts. 
And then if I drag up and down, we can see the cut and fill areas and volumes on a section by section basis. When I'm finished reviewing the report, I'll click the X to close the browser. I will then press escape to deselect the sample line. Let's zoom out and we'll pan over. Notice that when you calculate your materials, Civil 3D will graphically display those in the section views using those shape styles that we selected earlier. Right here we can see the cut area and we can see the fill area. And you can see that that is consistent on all sections. Now, since these materials are considered sampled items, we can turn them on and off very easily using the view group properties. If I wanted to hide their display, I could select one of the sections. I could come up to view group properties. And here on the sections tab, I could use the draw option to display or hide these. Likewise, if I wanted to, I could change their style from here as well. I'm going to keep things the way they are. I'll click the X to close the dialog box. Finally, now that I've created this quantity takeoff criteria, I could drag and drop this into my template file such that it will be available in all future drawings. By setting these up ahead of time, you are only a couple clicks away from calculating your roadway earthwork. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.